The parents of Gabby Petito have settled with the parents of Brian Laundry. Of course, this is the case that many have been following now for many, many years. The story of Gabby Petito being murdered by her boyfriend, Brian Laundry, and then the saga of that, not knowing or pretending to not know anything about the death, the family, the Laundries going camping, hoping and praying for Gabby's return. Well, it turns out they knew she was dead for quite some time. Uh, and a civil case brought against them for that uh, that behavior, that uh, lack of empathy, that lack of showing any sort of human decency to another family that has a daughter that is missing. A case that I don't think was ever about money, but more so about emotions and doing the right thing. And now it is settled. Joining me to discuss, Siobhan Scott, psychotherapist and author. That being said, yeah, I don't think it's ever been about money. I don't think the laundries necessarily had a, a lot to give at the end of the day. Um, but what, what, why do you think this finally came to an end, uh, all these years into it, literally about two, three months before this was supposed to go to trial? Yeah, you, you nailed it specifically. That was, that was my thought that they needed to be heard. They needed to say what they wanted to say. They needed to express all the gamut of pain and, and anger that they've been through and a skilled mediator can help people hear each other mm -hmm. and help people come to some sense of emotional closure. And so my guess is they had a good mediator and everybody was able to, to communicate and they felt understood, they felt heard, and that mm -hmm. some kind of amends were made. And I'm glad if that's the way it went. It is a, a confidential resolution. It uh, doesn't mention anything about monies or anything of that nature. I would hope at the very least their attorney fees were taken care of. Mm -hmm. um, but what do you think they did here? What do you think happened with that mediation uh, that, that made the Petitos finally say, okay, we are good. We're going to move forward. We want to have some peace and, and move forward uh, in, in a positive light with the legacy of Gabby. Yeah, my guess is that the mediator gave them the opportunity to look each other in the eye and express exactly how they were feeling and how the laundry's behavior had impacted them. Mm -hmm. And then in all likelihood, if I were mediating, I would have given the laundry's opportunity to explain what had been going on with them and to make amends and apologize. Mm -hmm. And when that was successfully done, then it probably opened the door for some kind of other resolution mm -hmm. about the money or whatever. But yeah, it wasn't about the money. No, I don't think it ever was. This seemed to be more about the journey than the destination. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I think they probably had to go down this journey uh, to to get where they needed to go, you know, mentally, I, I would think. I mean, it's a very, exactly. very private thing, you know, for these families. Obviously, many people have been invested in talking about it. But at the end of the day, it's about uh, these these two sets of parents who lost their daughter, Gabby, and and were really victimized horribly by the laundries uh, in that process, something that never really needed to take place the way that it did. But I guess the only way that some of these things would have come out because there was no criminal prosecution against the laundries was to take this civilly. Mm -hmm. um, and, and through that process, um, never made the laundries have to come out and say, look, we did this, we did that. It all just kind of came to the surface uh, through various documents and, and various discoveries and pieces like that. And I think the public did get to see uh, exactly mm -hmm. who the laundries were through all sorts of, of pieces uh, and also who uh, the Petito family uh, is as well. Um, is this what it was all about? Never like really truly getting to that end point, but just we're going to expose you, but not with force. It's just going to kind of come. And then that's going to, over time, kind of give us the peace um, um, that we need uh, as, as they tried to, to navigate life after Gabby. Yeah, yeah. I think it was a really important um, process for them to be able to do that, to feel like the story was told, the truth mm -hmm. became apparent over time, and then the need to express how their behavior, how the laundry's behavior impacted the Petitos. Mm -hmm. And I think once they got to do that, it was like, okay, we're we're uh, feeling more at peace about this now. What do you think uh, Gabby's uh, legacy will be? Obviously, you know, we've we've talked about abuse. We've talked about um, things of that nature that, uh, you know, goes unchecked, goes untalked about because people don't want to, you know, it's embarrassing sometimes to say that your significant other is doing this to you. It, it's painful. It's hurtful. It, it's some, it, 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 it 
it's you know it, it's shameful to a certain extent, but it's obviously not the victim's fault. What sort of impact uh, with people learning about the story do you think she'll have going forward? I, I think it's a tremendous um, opportunity, particularly for younger women who perhaps have not had so much education about the the various ways domestic violence um, is perpetrated. Mm -hmm. And because of her age and her popularity and the publicity that this case got, that it's raised awareness and will ultimately have an impact. You know, she was somebody that you would, anyone would have looked at her as beautiful, smart, successful, and had everything going for her. And yet this is what happened. Mm -hmm. And I think that that has a really good message for younger women who may not be aware of it. Yeah, that not everything is is as perfect as it may appear on the surface yes. of social media. It's okay if something bad is happening behind the scenes, but you can do something about it rather than trying exactly. to always keep the appearances up. Yeah. yeah. Hey, it's Tony Bruschi. If you like the podcast, be sure to like, subscribe, and press that bell so you don't miss any of our updates on the cases we're following for you right here at the Hidden Killers podcast and True Crime Today. And thanks.